Hey lovelies! So I will fully admit that I am not the most avid baker out there, but come the fall season, I start craving some sweet baked goods, and I always know that that means it is time for cookies. And today we are celebrating cookies three delicious ways, and I couldn't be more excited. I'm gonna get started today by sharing a recipe for some classic snickerdoodles. If you've never had a snickerdoodle, yes, the name is a bit silly, but the flavor is on point. It's got a cinnamony finish that is perfect for fall, and they're really, really easy to make. So we have got some all-purpose flour in our bowl. To that, I'm going to add a little cream of tartar and some baking soda. The cream of tartar in a snickerdoodle recipe is absolutely essential because it gives the cookies just a touch of tang. I'm also going to be adding a little salt to this as well as a good helping of cinnamon. I'm gonna whisk this all together so that it's well combined and then it will set those aside while I get to work on beating up some butter. Now I like using room temperature butter in my baking. It's just gonna make your life a whole lot better. We're just going to beat that better butter with our beater until it's nice and light and fluffy. And then we will add some sugar to this. Now traditionally in cookies, I usually use a combination of white sugar and brown sugar, but Snickerdoodles usually call it for just white sugar, so that's what I'm using here. I'm also going to be adding one egg to this recipe as well as a good helping of vanilla extract. We'll mix all of those together and then we can get our dry ingredients mixed up into our wet ingredients. I like adding my dry ingredients one half at a time because it just makes for a little less mess in the kitchen and helps this get nice and incorporated. And you'll see that your dough is gonna be quite crumbly, but. It's just a matter of sort of packing it together when we make our cookies. Just before we get to rolling our cookies, I'm going to mix up my cinnamon sugar mixture, which as the name suggests, just involves mixing some cinnamon and some sugar together in a bowl. Then we're just going to use our handy dandy cookie scoop to scoop some dough, roll it into a ball, and then I'll roll it in my cinnamon sugar mixture, and then I'm just going to arrange these on a parchment lined baking sheet. Then we'll get these into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for between 10 and 12 minutes. You'll know they're ready when they're just a little golden on the bottom and they start to crackle a bit on top. That is always a good sign. When they come out of the oven, it is critically important that you exercise patience and let them cool at least five minutes before diving in. What you're gonna end up with are these amazing, soft, chewy cookies that are just so good with a glass of milk. Now, what kind of Canadian would I be if I didn't have a maple cookie for you guys this fall? I am making these awesome maple pecan cookies. Maple syrup obviously is in abundance here in Canada and I use it in just about everything, sweet dishes and savory dishes because I love it so, so much. These start once again with my dry ingredients. I'm just going to whisk up a little bit of flour with some baking soda and a touch of salt. Once that's all mixed up, I will go ahead and set it aside and get to work on beating up my butter with my hand mixer. I'll be adding some brown sugar to this, and once that's nice and light and fluffy, I am going to be adding some maple syrup as well as an egg and a little bit of vanilla extract. If you wanted to amp up that maple flavor even more here, you could also add a splash or two of maple extract, but totally not necessary. The maple syrup does go a long way. Once that's all mixed up, we can go ahead and add our dry ingredients to this. And once our dough has formed, the final step will be folding in our nuts. Now, if you wanna keep these cookies nut-free, you definitely can, but I think that the combination of the maple syrup and some chopped pecans is just perfection. So I'm going to get a good helping of those in. I really like what the pecans do to the texture of these cookies because they're really soft and sort of chewy and the pecans give them just a bit of good crunch. I'm going to form my cookies the very same way using my cookie scoop. I'm just going to roll them into balls and then arrange them on my parchment lined baking sheet. And to make these extra special, I'm actually going to be adding one pecan half to the tops of each of my cookies. These will head into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes or so. Now of course, because you're hungry, you may pull these out of the oven a little too soon. We think it's really important that you take a pecan C to make sure they're a little golden before you do. Finally, my friends, if you are looking for an absolutely earth-shattering cookie to change your lives, then you have come to the right place because I am going to show you how to make these unbelievable, giant, crinkly chocolate chip cookies that will actually change the way you look at cookies forever. 
Now, if you are not familiar with these cookies, I certainly cannot take credit for them. A few years ago, this recipe was shared in the New York Times, and it basically broke the internet because they are so tasty, but they're actually really easy to make. They start as all of our cookies have with our dry ingredients. So I have got my all-purpose flour in a bowl. I'm going to add some baking soda to that and a good helping of salt. We're adding a little more salt than usual in this recipe. It just helps to sort of offset all of that nice, sweet chocolate. And we're just gonna whisk that together so it's nicely combined, and then we will work on our wet ingredients. So we're gonna start by beating up our butter. Once that's gotten nice and light and pale and fluffy, we can go in with our sugars. So I've got some white sugar here, as well as some brown sugar. Once our sugar and our butter is well combined, we're gonna go ahead and get our egg in here, as well as some vanilla extract. Once that's all beaten up, we'll add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients and bring them together in doughy matrimony. At this point, the final step is going to be adding our chocolate chips, which in this recipe actually aren't chocolate chips at all. We're using some finely chopped semi-sweet chocolate. And the reason chopped chocolate is so delicious is because you get more chocolate per bite and it sort of spreads out and makes this amazing marble effect. Now, when I called these cookies giant, I really wasn't kidding. The recipe calls for using a third of a cup of dough per cookie. That's a lot of dough and a lot of cookie. This ice cream scoop is just a little less than that, but I love my cookies being uniform, so I'm gonna use it to scoop my dough and form my cookies. Obviously, it is really important because these cookies are gonna spread out quite a bit to give them some space on your baking sheet. I think maximum four cookies per baking sheet. Just before baking these, it is really important to get them into the freezer for 15 minutes. No more, no less. I know, guys, this is science, not art, so it's important to follow these instructions carefully. While those are in the freezer, we are going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and once that oven is preheated, we are going to get our frozen cookies straight into the oven and let them cook undisturbed for 10 minutes. At the 10 minute mark, you're going to notice that they will have spread out almost completely, and that means it's time to go in with some oven mitts and give the tray a couple good slams. Now I know this sounds a little unorthodox, but what happens is you start to create these little ripples on the cookies. And what you're gonna end up with is this incredible crispy exterior, but this soft and chewy interior that is just absolutely to die for. We'll let our cookies cook for another two minutes before going in again with the very same technique. We're going to do this three or four times until our cookies have these amazing ripples through them and they bake for between 16 and 18 minutes. At that point, out of the oven they come, but you will still have five full minutes to wait before you fight your husband for them. And trust me when I tell you guys, these are cookies worth fighting for. They are crisp around the edges, soft and chewy in the center, and unbelievably perfect when dipped in a glass of milk. If I haven't yet convinced you of the awesomeness of these cookies, I highly recommend you give them a try for yourselves. In fact, I hope you try all three of these tasty recipes, and if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because I love seeing your kitchen creations. The full recipes are linked in the description box below. You can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from. Cookie deliciousness.